We've seen already that a C program implemented in multiple files can be compiled by supplying both of the files to GCC. Um, and in particular, uh, that GCC step has to compile the C code to assembly code and then put things together. Uh, there's multiple steps there, in fact. Um, the first step is the C preprocessor, and we'll look at that step a little bit today. Uh, then there's the compiler proper, the CC1 step is the part that takes the C code, does the optimizations, and generates uh, assembly code. Then there's an assembler step. And then finally, uh, what we'll look at a lot today is the linking step at the end that links the, uh, the machine code for main C and some C together. We've also seen that you can do some of these steps separately. Um, in this case, where I compile main with dash C, that triggers just the first three parts of the pipeline. Uh, that we saw before. It's uh, the preprocessor plus the compiler proper plus the assembler. And then that step at the end, that's the linker step. Um, LD is the name of the program that GCC runs to perform linking. Uh, and when we looked at this before, the, the reason that we have for compiling and linking separately is that when you compile an individual file, uh, the compilation and optimizations, optimization step is uh, the long step. It could be relatively long for larger programs or lots of files. And so by breaking up the compilation and link steps uh, this way, then uh, we can make things faster by not recompiling if they haven't changed. Uh, if I've only changed main and not some, then I can just recompile main and then relink them. Also, uh, some might be a general library kind of file, so I might link it together with different mains. And by separately compiling and linking, then I compile some uh, dado once and use it in multiple linking steps. Also, as we're going to, to see today and next time, linking, uh, compiling to separate dado files is on the path to even more sharing, not just forming different executables, but actually running executables, uh, sharing the, the machine code across the processes that are running. So there are a variety of reasons that we want to compile and link separately. And um, a good thing for today is that it lets us look in more detail at the linking steps. We've seen this kind of picture before, too. When we have main.c, we compile it to some machine code and an object file main.o, and similarly for some c, some.o. Previously, we've concentrated on the machine code itself that's in that file, but today we're mostly going to ignore that and instead look at the extra piece of data that's there. When this main program is compiled, then the, um, the main function is in that compiled file as well as the array variable declaration. This sum here declaration doesn't define sum, it just says there should be a sum function that can be called. So we see that in the .o file. This .o file for main.o says it defines array, it defines main, and it needs to use sum. Sum, meanwhile, declares that there is an array somewhere, and we'll talk a little more about that declaration form. Uh, then it defines the function sum. So the object file in this case is that it defines sum, and it uses some array variable. These object files don't have information about the types of these, these names, um, and it doesn't exactly say whether they're functions or data. Um, in general, it's just a, it declares these symbols, um, and that's the general word for the name, symbols, array, main, and sum, uh, that have to be matched up by the linker. So when GCC passes these two object files, or when we pass these two object files to GCC, uh, to link them together, we get a main executable, and it does that by matching up, okay, this main defines array, and sum uses array, so it's going to connect those symbols up. Um, and this main needs to use sum, and this sum.o defines them, and those match up. And uh, when we take those two things together, there's no uses that aren't satisfied by defines, so that's why we can generate the final executable.